I still get a lot of questions about how I hook all of this stuff up, how the computer is hooked to the console, how it gets to the patch bay, how each of the rooms are connected. So in these next couple videos, I'm gonna do my best to explain what we've done and why. Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. I'm still getting a lot of questions about how everything here is hooked up. That's gear, uh, how the rooms are hooked up, and that sort of thing. And today I'm gonna take a little time to go over how we connect all the rooms. Because there's three main ways we do it. There's mic lines, tie lines, and loop lines. And there's a couple cool little tricks I think you may be able to use at home as well. Now, I've already done one video about the patch bay here, and I've done another one about how to hook some external gear up to your system. I will put those links in the description. I will also tackle, in another video, how the console is hooked to the patch bay and the I.O. and how that gets into the computer, because that is a big one, but I'm gonna do that in its own video. Today, like I said, I wanna focus on how the rooms are connected here. Mic lines, tie lines, loop lines. First off, mic lines. Every room here, control room, ISO, which is right off the control room here, the live room, and our new amp locker ISO in the back, all have uh, mic lines in them. Control, I've got two, I have six in there, I have 24 in the main room, and I have six in the back. All of those come to the first patch bay top row. So no matter where you plug a mic into in any of these rooms, it's gonna be on this top, top row, this top patch bay. The first 24 channels are hardwired, or not hardwired, but uh, normaled right to the console. And then these over here have some of the outboard pre's above them, but I can still patch things wherever I want to. They all show up in one spot. Two in here, like I said, these two in here, we use these quite a bit actually, cutting vocals, or you know, I've even done some percussion stuff sitting in here and I didn't wanna go in the other room or whatever. They come in quite handy. Now, the other two things we have running are the tie lines and the loop lines. And these are kinda cool because these allow us to send sound any direction to any room. They also let us put players and amps or other gear wherever we want it. So we could have players in here, amps in the ISO or amps out in the, the live room. We could even have heads in here and have the, the cabinets out in the other room or whatever. But it also allows us to do a lot of live recording because that is something I do a lot where the whole band is here and we're all tracking together. And we wanna to try to get takes that we can keep of the whole band. So we've made it so we can easily have everybody out in the live room, but still isolate the amps to the point where even if we need to punch in some stuff, we can. But the goal being to everyone play together, which is one of my favorite ways to record. Down here, separate from the patch bay, not, not counting the two XLRs here, we have our loop system. And the loop system is a set of speaker lines, a set of mono, lines and a set of stereo just you know regular tie lines so the speaker lines we have here these four allow us to have say we could have a guitar player in here in the control room with the head pedals the whole nine yards but the cabinet is either in the iso booth or it's in the live room we could run the speaker line from the cabinet or from the head that's in here in the control room and run it to any of those other rooms so we can make adjustments, you know, do whatever, and we're only monitoring what the microphone is hearing. And that can go any way. It could be a player is in the live room. This happens quite a bit, actually, where the players in the live room keep the head in there, but we put the cabinet in one of the ISO booths. And that way, you can still be sitting in there playing with the drummer, playing with the band, everybody can communicate. You have control over your sound, but you're only hearing, we're monitoring only what the microphone is hearing, which makes it easier to dial in uh, small adjustments on the amp. That's what the speaker lines are for. And there's two in there, or there's four in there, and there's four in there. We'll, I'll show you those patch, all the patch panels in a second. The other set is the mono loops. These get used a lot for, you know, bass. Uh, also guitar, let's say, uh, for instance, I just got done working with the band Argus Row. Really cool metal band here in LA. We had the guitar players all in the live room, but we had their amps in both of the ISOs, but the heads and everything were in the ISO too. So all we had to do is we came out of their guitar, into their pedals, or whatever they were using. Like Rob was using a 5150 pedal. Then we ran out of that pedal into the mono loop and into the ISO booth. We can send all sorts of signals that way. I've used it for headphones, keyboards, that sort of thing. And then there's four stereo versions of that as well. 
So that way I can use that for even headphones if I needed to. Or a lot of times it ends up being stereo keys when you know the keyboard player is out in the live room. Maybe they have multiple keyboards and they're running some stuff or they're running out of the computer and want to separate everything. So a lot of the times I'll run them through these stereo loops and come right in here, say to my overstayer and go right into the front of those so I'm not taking up mic lines in the other room in case I want to go overboard on the drums or something. I've never done that. So this is, that's the patch panel in here, or that's the, the loop panel in here. The other thing is I do have a set of tie lines in the patch bay. There's two stereo, two mono, and then one that specifically goes to the ISO booth right here. Now this makes it so it's easy for me to patch any sound that I'm listening to up here on the console. Anything that's going on, I can say patch an aux channel right into these tie lines and I can send it to any of these rooms. It can be a headphone mix maybe for a singer in the ISO booth. Uh, it could be reamping a lot of the times. That's the, the two monos I'll send back into the live room for reamping bass and guitar and things like that. But basically, it can be used for whatever. And they can go both ways. It's not just sound getting from here to the other rooms. Like this that I just pulled out of here, I actually have a little setup because I've been recording some piano, but I have the mic pre out there with me so I can kind of play with levels. And it was coming in here on my mono tie, and then I was patching it straight into the I.O. going right into the computer. So basically the system is set up to have anyone anywhere and be able to send sound to another room, which makes workflow very, very easy and very versatile. All right, so that is the control room set up. Let's take a look at the ISO and the live room. All right, come hither. We will go to the ISO booth first. Down here in the corner, you can see our ISO patch panel. Get these guys out of the way. So at the top, we have our patch ties. These are what is in the patch bay. So those mono and stereo tie lines I showed you in the patch bay, that's where they come out in here. So I can send a stereo, and I use this for headphone mixes a lot, or I can, I've done reamping out of the mono quite a bit. Below this is two mono loop lines that I showed you that were in that rack that was below the patch bay and then there's four stereo or no sorry four speaker lines in here as well as I have these are getting replaced so there's six mic lines down there this is going to become HDMI and this is going to become an Ethernet connection and I'll show you that in the other room now it's a little overkill in here when we set the room up we kind of put a little more than we needed because I didn't really want to have to come back later and go, oh crap, I wish I had like three more lines in here. I've actually never used more than four microphones in here or more than two speaker lines. So at some point, like another year goes by, I may lose two of these speaker lines and put something else in here that's more usable, which is why I'm losing two of the mic lines because I've never used eight. So one of them is gonna be ethernet and one will be HDMI so we can throw that stuff around to each of the rooms. But that is, the ISO, ISO one patch panel. All right, coming in here. Now the big kahuna panel. Okay, let's see what we have going here. Start at the bottom. We have our four, let's see if we can focus. I know it's a little dark. These are our four patch ties. There's two stereo and two mono. So these monos end up being reamp channels a lot. These end up being headphone channels. Above it, right here, these two guys are the, let me see if I can get that out of the way. This is the mono loop lines. And then here's the four stereo loops. And then over here on the left side, we have the four speaker lines. So you see how they're all kind of the same. So once again, no matter where you are, we can send it. As well as 24 mic lines. I have four ethernet lines for the headphone system. And then I have four BNC lines that we use to put video between the rooms. A lot of the times that is for the live broadcasting. And eventually I will stick a couple HDMI back in here as well. And that's how we get everything between these three rooms. They're all connected, a little bit redundant, but I can tell you at some point I have had almost all of these running, at least from the live room to the control room before especially the the loop lines man that stuff comes in so freaking handy and i got to give credit to my buddy scott francisco because i didn't think of that now the new room back here this is a work in progress 
As of right now, it's mainly used for guitars. So I only have, at the moment, I have two tie loops and two speaker lines. Like I said, mainly guitars. Come back here, and there is a corresponding patch panel in here with the two tie loops and the two speaker lines. And at the moment, I only have four mic lines in here. There will be two more. They're on the bench over to my right. I just need to do a little soldering. And then eventually there'll be a set of HDMI and a few things back here as it gets finished. And then what I do for back here to make it more usable and it functions really well as a live room is a piece of carpet down. I have carpet on the wall going up about three feet so it's a little taller than a four by 12. And then a lot of the times I take these panels, whatever I'm not using out in the live room and I'll build a little bit of a hut around the amps just to kind of block it off a little bit. But the cool thing back here with it not being in a box is I don't have to worry about, you know, any real buildup at any of the boomy frequencies or anything because it's the whole, you know, I've got some volume back here and it works really well. But I'll do more on this as it gets turned into a full-fledged ISO later. So that is how these three rooms are connected. Now, like I said, we do, for me, it, it ends up being a lot about being able to be functional and versatile for whatever projects I'm working on, especially when bands are in here recording live, when maybe it's, you got drums taken up, you know, 16, 18, 19 tracks, there's bass, you got two guitars, maybe a keyboard, even sometimes having vocals going in the control room. But now at home, one thing you could do, the, the, the loop lines are interesting because for instance, at Ernesto's apartment, we used to way back in the day, we kind of converted his closet or he converted his closet into an amp locker and he had his rig and everything set up out in his living room and he just ran a mic line or two, I think, and then a speaker line from his head back to the cab that was in there and really fairly well isolated in his apartment. We've recorded this loud four by 12 tracks all the time, but it allowed us to put the mic on the, the cabinet and just dial in his head or change heads or add a pedal and we're only hearing back what the mic is capturing, so it made it a lot easier to dial sounds in. And that'd be something you could easily do at home. You know, if you have a spare closet, even a spare bedroom or a garage or something, you could run some lines out to. My buddy Kevin Chown at his house had his studio in one of the small rooms, but then he ran mic lines out to the living room and other spots so he could record piano and all sorts of things. It was actually kind of cool. So it's very useful. But anyway, that is the, the tie loop and mic line set up here. Next time, you see me doing one of these videos. I'm gonna go over the console and how that is hooked up. If you have any more questions, please let me know. Happy recording, everybody. See you soon.